Tashtalay everyone and uh, welcome to a very special edition of Tibet Talks. I am Benji Gyatso of the International Campaign for Tibet, an organization inspired by the vision of His Holiness the Dalai Lama that works to promote human rights, democratic freedoms and self-determination for the people of Tibet. Today, for the first Tibet Talk program of 2023, we are truly honored and pleased to have the opportunity to present you with a very special conversation. Um, first, I have to introduce you to my guest co-host for today's program. My co-host joining from San Diego is an ICT board member and a dear friend of Tibet. She has been on our board since 2012, but before this, she spent more than 15 years working as a radio and television personality, working in creative marketing and production, as well as involved in numerous philanthropic organizations in San Diego. Her family foundation, the Unicorn Foundation, is a nonprofit um, that provides philanthropy worldwide for causes concerning the arts animal protection and human rights. So please join me to welcome Pam Cisek. Hello, Pam. Good morning, dear Tensho. What an exciting talk we have today. I know we're very excited to have you and it's very, very special. So I thank you for making uh, time to join us and I will let you introduce our guest. Thank you, Tensho. I'm so honored to introduce to you an incredibly gifted cartoonist, a fine artist, compassionate, kind human being who I also get to call my friend, Patrick McDonald. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Patrick, he's the creator of the beloved Mutz comic strip with Mooch and Earl and an assorted cast of lovable creatures. You can read Mutz in over 700 newspapers in 20 countries or in your inbox like I do every morning to start my day. Patrick is the author of several New York Times best-selling picture books, including the award-winning Me Jane, a childhood biography of Jane Goodall. Patrick has collaborated with spiritual leader Eckhart Tolle, creating a gorgeous book called Guardians of Being, but it's his latest collaboration that we're most excited about, the remarkable Heart to Heart, a conversation on love and hope for our precious planet with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Without further ado, please help me welcome our special guest and a dear friend of ICT, Patrick McDonald. Hi, Pam. Hi, Tencho. Happy to be here. Very exciting. Thank you, Patrick, for joining us. Uh, thrilled to have you. We're all learning about this book as it just came out uh, two days ago. I want to ask, uh, begin our conversation by asking you um, to tell us how did the idea for the book come about and uh, tell us the story behind that. Well, you know, this book uh, actually started in Africa. Uh, Pam's husband, Jerry, and I were on the board of the Humane Society of the United States. And uh, Jerry put together a trip with his friends to uh, go to Africa and see the animals. And uh, Karen, my wife Karen and I uh, jumped at the chance. And uh, there we got to really get to know Jerry and Pam. And uh, one night under the stars, we were talking about how beautiful Africa was, but more importantly, how fragile this planet is. By just seeing the animals and knowing how tough it is on the world and the planet and for these animals. So the talk started, to, so then Pam mentioned how His Holiness is, one of his main concerns now is the environment. And uh, we also started talking a little bit about the book I did with Eckhart Tolle called Guardians of Being. I think Pam and my wife Karen started saying, well, maybe Patrick could do a book with His Holiness. And uh, Pam brought the idea to the board. And I guess, Pam, at this point, you could talk about what happened when you presented the idea of uh, a book on the environment? Well, once we had the idea, the first thing I did was went to my dear friend Tensho and said, Tensho, what do you think? And we both were so enchanted with the book and with the idea. So Tensho uh, used our resources at ICT to present the idea. 
um, to His Holiness's office. And Tensho, I'll let you finish your part of this collaboration. Yes, we did, and then um, and then we got the green light to move ahead. I think they were really happy uh, to see uh, Patrick's work and his background, and to be able to bring uh, His Holiness's message to a much wider audience um, uh, through this collaboration. And I think um, what it ended up has become this um, really a beautiful gift. And we, you know, we are, we, all of us are so um, honored and thrilled to be part of it. And we see this is the beginning of, uh, you know, this book reaching His Holiness's message, reaching a much larger audience through this book. So I'm really um, grateful and Happy to be here uh, celebrating this moment uh, with you both. It's taken, what, nearly two years to bring uh, this book to the world, but it has certainly been an incredible, incredible collaboration and certainly a project that was filled with so much love and so much joy. So we're just all very happy to be here together today. Yeah, I was, uh, it was an honor to do it. And, uh... I'm just so proud with how it came out. It, it's just uh, the, it's just a beautiful looking book, and the message is so powerful and so timely and so important. And, uh, being told in such a way that uh, you know everyone could uh, could enjoy this book. Patrick, that kind of brings us to our next question, which is: the book came out just a few days ago, so so many of our viewers today haven't had an opportunity to read the book or see the book. So can you give us a little synopsis of the story? And then I think that you've also brought some of your favorite illustrations and text from the book that you're going to share today with us. Yeah, yeah. If we could put up the slides, I'll do a little short version of, uh, well, there's the author. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a beautiful picture. I love that picture. Here it is, Heart to Heart, a conversation on love and hope for our precious planet. Parts with human use, population, and technology have reached that certain stage Mother Earth can no longer tolerate our present silence. And this book starts off pulling no punches. I mean, we our house is on fire and about and how we could fix it. Then we see a, a panda bear in the forest of Tibet. See, his environment has changed. He decides to go on a pilgrimage, get some answers. What is going on in his world? There we have His Holiness saying his morning, one of his morning prayers. May I become at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with oceans to cross, a bridge for those with rivers to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger. A lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those who lack shelter, a servant to all in need. And then there's a knock on the door, and the story begins. Knock, knock was the uh, only text I wrote. <laughs> the door, he, he meets the panda. He says to the panda, I welcome everyone as a friend. In truth, we share the same basic goals. We all seek happiness and do not want suffering. Then His Holiness and the panda go on a little walk in the nearby forest, have a heart to heart, the ways of the world. In the book, when he talks to the panda, he remembers his uh, journey. He first was a young boy and going from his hometown to his palace, the Dalai Lama. And what he remembers most about that long journey is all the beautiful animals he saw along the way. This is a picture of him as that little boy, and uh, he remembers the peacocks dancing in front of him. Then he goes on to talk about all the different animals he saw in this journey, and this is many gazelles and deers and antelopes he saw along the way. But then he tells the panda, sadly, this profusion of wildlife is no longer to be found. The panda roars. This is the only time the panda talks in the book. It's, it's they talk without, a, you know, a vocalization. It's more of a heart talk between the two of them. This is the only time he actually speaks. 
Then His Holiness says, perhaps one day we will kneel down and ask the animals for forgiveness. And for me, this is my favorite page in the book. Powerful. I, I actually showed this the book and this page in particular to a friend of mine who is an animal activist. And boy, actually uh, spent time photographing chickens and factory farms and uh, he just te tears came out of his eyes when he read this page. I took a powerful statement. Just one day we will kneel down and ask the animals for forgiveness. Peace and survival of life on earth as we know it are threatened by human activity, which lack a commitment to humanitarian values. Destruction of nature and natural resources result from ignorance, greed, and a lack of respect for the earth's living things. We humans are the only species with the power to destroy the earth as we know it. Yet if we have the capacity to destroy the earth, so too do we have the capacity to protect it. Passion, loving kindness, and altruism are the keys not only to human development, but also to planetary survival. Real change in the world will only come from a change of heart. What I propose is a compassionate revolution. I think that's the call from this book. That, that's, that's the heart of the book. What I propose is a passionate revolution. This is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. My philosophy is be kind whenever possible, and it is always possible. Everything we do has some effect, even a simple act. Although it might seem insignificant, when we multiply it by billions of others who might do the same thing, we can have an enormous impact. There are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday, the other is called tomorrow. Today is the right day to love, believe, do, mostly live positively to help others. I feel like that's the powerful message of His Holiness that uh, the book is a call to action that if we all do our part, we can help, you know, helps heal the planet. Thank you, Patrick. That was really powerful. And um, so many people have said that look, going through the book has brought just tears to their eyes. And you have really taken um, a complex story, a story and message and brought it down to a very visual, simple form of sharing with um, with, a, with a larger, wider audience. And I want to ask you, so portraying His Holiness is not an easy <laughs> job. You have to, it's a sensitive thing for us Tibetans also. And also you hadn't met His Holiness. So you know, we were going to meet His Holiness um, right before um, COVID started. And then you were going to have, you know, meet and then do the book, but that didn't happen. So, um, can you share with our audience how, you know, what was the research? How, how, how did you end up by doing this and portraying it in such a, um, sensitive and, um, you know, in a, in a joyful way? Because, yeah, can you share with us? Well, you know, um, I think one of the, one of the reasons the book works well is that you know, when you read His Holiness's writings, every sentence is so powerful and so important. And I think with this book, the fact that you know I added art to each sentence, and like there, you know, each page only has maybe a sentence or two, three tops, so it really forces the reader to spend time with those words. Like you. you you sit in, at that page and just read the sentence and look at the art. And it slows you down. You know, in this world where so everything is so fast, I think the magic of this book is that you get to read His Holiness's powerful words, lower pace, and let it sink in. And boy, as far as the art goes, um, you know. It, it, <laughs> I have to admit, you know, it was it was a scary proposition to, to try to, to do that and to try to do my best. And, you know, I, I'm not the most I'm not a really great realistic artist and I'm not a great caricaturist. I, I think what I what I am good at is I, I 
try to capture feelings, emotions, and get things to the heart, you know, to the essence of something. So I, I was trying to capture the joy of His Holiness. I mean, when you see the picture, like just the that fantastic amount of joy that just oozes out from him. And I, I tried my best to try to just capture that, not necessarily to do a, the most realistic picture of him, but to try to capture that feeling of joy and happiness. And that, that's what I try to do with all my drawings, even with the animals. I don't think they're the most accurate drawings of animals, but I try to capture their spirit. Mm. And, uh, and I think you have done that because meeting his holiness, you know, in person, um, the reaction is different for every people, but he touches each one individually. And in your book, you get the sense that you, you're being touched by his holiness. So oh, well, well, thank you. Very you know, I, I've talked to a, a few people who've, who've been in his presence and they all say how they're, they're you know, they're, uh, everything about him changes. I think. I'm standing. Yeah. Having met His Holiness, Patrick, I would agree with you. He's just such an extraordinary person that exudes such joy. And I think you did a beautiful job in capturing the essence of what His Holiness is, is about. It's, it's just incredible. What I'd like to ask you now about is the panda. Um, as my family and friends are starting to read the book, that's the question I'm getting asked most. Number one, why the panda? Number two, when you were thinking about this book, were there any other creatures you considered? And three, which you touched on um, during your reading, which is what were your thoughts on keeping the panda silent? Well, uh, you know, it, it went through a lot of different changes, the book. Um, you know, I, I started reading a, a, probably 30 different books, and I was, I was just looking for statements that His Holiness said about the environment, about animals, and um, I knew I wanted the book to be a conversation. I wanted the book to be a conversation, you know, with the audience. So one of my first doodles in my sketchbook was uh, I was going to have him meet the Yeti, the abominable snowman, <laughs> uh, because I thought, well, you know, the Yeti's in that vicinity. And I also thought, you know, the, the Yeti's, you know, known that no one sees him and he's like hidden in the wild. And I felt as, as, as nature disappears, he has no place to hide. So now he might have to reveal himself. But it would be interesting if he uh, went to uh, the Dalai Lama to discuss the Yeti's part human, I think. So he wanted to discover more of his human side. That's one path I went. Um, I actually, I actually did another path where, uh, I have a little character in my comic strip mutts named Jules. who's a tabby cat who thinks he's a lion. And he's concerned about lions going extinct. I thought maybe he would go visit the Dalai Lama and, and talk about the state of the planet and lions in particular. But then in my research, I was reading a beautiful book called My Tibet. It's photographs mm -hmm. at His Holiness's commentary. And it shows a lot of animals and his thoughts on different animals. Uh, boy, there was a picture of a panda bear, and he, he talked about, you know, panda being Tibet's animal. And uh, realized also that the panda bear is like the worldwide symbol for endangered animals. But that the panda would be a, a good uh, person to uh, have that talk with his whole. That's how I decided on the panda. And, then, and in the beginning, I thought that they would actually literally talk to each other. I mean, tuna, so animals talk all the time in my world. But, um, you know, the way I work, I, I feel like when I do my comic strip, it's a lot like poetry. You just keep on paring down and try to, you know, you, you try to say the most you can with the least. And when I uh, kept on uh, doing it, I kept on doing less talk from the panda, and I realized, no, the panda shouldn't talk at all. They talk, you know, more on a spiritual level, you know, that this whole thing says a heart to heart. I realized the, the panda and he were understanding each other, but they didn't necessarily need to, to talk in language. They were talking to each other from their hearts. 
Tom the Pante makes it very special and it was the perfect choice for the book. So that was a great choice. Um, but plus pandas are fun to draw. <laughs> and they're such I mean they're and they're so loving and so much fun. I mean uh you know in, in researching the book I for many videos and learned about how they love to tumble. So they I had to put the you know a, a, a page spread in there with the panda tumbling. I love that. And then he tumbles into a bed of flowers. That yes. <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. I think it's the perfect choice. The perfect choice. Um, so my, I want to ask you, you know, Patrick, uh, this book wasn't just something you did on the side. You took this, you took time off and uh, you sat down with it and you gave it really uh, a lot. So can you tell us um, how long did the project take and, um, and, uh, and something about your creative process? Well, you know, um, I think since a trip to Africa to finally handing in the book, it was probably like a year and a half, well, at least a year and a half making and during that i realized that I, I really wanted it to give it all my attention you know when you do a daily comic strip uh that takes a lot of time and uh i've been i was doing months probably for about 28 years and i never took a, a sabbatical from i i asked my uh, syndicate if i could take six months off so i could uh, do this book with the dalai lama and they were uh Nice enough to say yes, you can take six months. During that period, and thank goodness I did it because it, it took more than the six months to finish this. Three pages. I just, I just wanted it to be right, so I, I did many, many drawings, and you know, I wanted it to be the way I, I do my books. I, I like spontaneity and to get that initial power of the sketch. So all, all the drawings I didn't pencil, I just went right to ink. I did a lot of versions of them and I just wanted each drawing to just feel right. I, I did a lot until they, they felt right. It was a great process. I, I, uh, I worked, I found a great steep, uh, music, uh, the inner world, the Dalai Lama's inner world. It's, uh, music of, uh, Beautiful music, and the Dalai Lama recites uh, prayers with the music. So uh, that was my background music for. It was either silence or or that that music when I was drawing. Them. Wow, that's incredible. So Patrick, I I don't want to embarrass you, but I do want to share with our viewers um, some of the incredible things that people are saying about the book. For example. Dr. Jane Goodall has called Heart to Heart a blueprint for how we should live with love, compassion, and humor. Our ICT board chair, Richard Gere, was inspired to write a beautiful letter after he first saw the book, and Richard said, our time may be running out. This delightful book will help us reorient our priorities and wake us up to our high purpose. And I have to share with you, when my husband read the book, he cried. Um, why do you think that this beautiful book is evoking such an incredible emotional response from the readers? And how do you feel about all this incredible early praise? Well, uh, you know, that's, that's all uh, His Holiness. I mean, that, the, the words are just so powerful and so timely. I mean, you know, Everybody now, I think, is experiencing climate change in one way or the other. I know, Pam, you're out in California with the, with the rains. And here in New Jersey, it's January, and I think it's going to be 50 degrees today. So I, I think we're all aware that there is a problem and we need to address it. And, um, boy, and what a way, to, I mean, His Holiness' his words, I mean, what a way to address it with kindness and compassion and empathy. I mean, all things we can do and all things that seem so simple, but we just have to be reminded of. And I think this book reminds you of that. And I, you know, it probably makes you cry because you realize how silly we are. That, that's, that's not in our lives all the time. 
we were all kind, none of these problems would exist. All just were as compassionate as his holiness. It would be a different world, wouldn't it? Back yes. A world where everyone was as kind and joyful as his holiness. It would be a whole different world. And we can do it. So what this book is telling us it's time for us to do that. I think people uh, want to hear that message, need to hear that message. So much negative things out there in the world. I just feel like this is a little jewel of a book. People can find solace and uh, uh, inspiration from. And you're not only saying that, but uh, you are also, you and um, Karen have put together a whole uh, page on your website promoting a compassion, a revolution with compassion, compassionate revolution. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the uh, my much website did a landing page for this book, Heart to Heart, and um, it just came out beautiful. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get people to uh, change the world, you know, to, to join that compassionate revolution. And, and like I said, just small things, you know, you don't, you don't need to do a lot. Because if everyone did it, those small things just keep on adding up and it, it changes. So, uh, I mean, for instance, I, I'm a vegan. Uh, if people even just did Meatless Monday, you know, millions of animals won't be harmed by taking one day out of the week and not eating meat, you know, going plant-based one day a week. So it's uh, you know, small acts all add up, all add up. We're hoping that uh, this book can help start that compassionate revolution as Holiness talks about. Thank you. And I also want to tell our viewers that um, not only is this book a gift for us all, Patrick and Karen, your um, generosity in supporting ICT's work for Tibet with the proceeds of that book, that is also a really generous gesture from you. So it is not just a book that you publish, but it's a book that you're supporting this cause for Tibet um, and the vision of His Holiness um, yes. with the proceeds. So thank you also for that. I want to share that. Well, that's why everybody who's listening should buy the book because the money's going to go to a great cause. Absolutely. Thank you both so much. So, so Patrick, I thought we could also share um, with our viewers today that this is a global book and maybe talk a little bit about um, the various editions that will be published throughout the world. Yeah, I think we're up to like 10 or 12 countries. I, I think off the top of my head, I know Germany. Korea, I believe, right? Pam, do you, do you know the, uh, the list? I, ha I have the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, obviously, our U.S. edition came out this week, but we also have a U.K. edition, Germany, France, Holland, Brazil, Italy, Portugal, Spain, the Czech Republic, Taiwan uh, will have a Chinese language version, and Korea, and that's just the start of it, and I know um, that it's very rare for a book to find foreign publishers prior to its arrival in the U.S. So this is an extraordinary start for Heart to Heart, and I think we're anticipating it reaching to every part of the world. It's a message the whole world needs to hear, so that, that's great news. It is. So Tensho and I have another question for you, and, and that is, is there going to be a second book? <laughs> You know, uh, I would love to do a second book. I, 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 we can make that happen. Count me in. <laughs> well, we are traveling with you to Dharamsala, so you have time to think about it. <laughs> you can have um, Earl join us on that trip to Dharamsala. <laughs> and you will find so much inspiration there. So um, I, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed for book number two. <laughs> we yeah, also I, have a, a lot of um, tremendous events coming up. Um, our board chair, Richard Gere, who is um, an, another amazing human being, is going to be joining you next week for a talk that's actually free with Warwick's, which is one of America's oldest independent bookstores. It's actually here in La Jolla in California. 
And um, I think that's February 2nd. And Pencho, maybe we can um, post some information uh, for how people can hear that conversation, which will be incredible between Richard and Patrick about the book. And what other things do we have coming up? Um, I know some things for you, Patrick, in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a book signing and reading at uh, Labyrinth Books in Princeton, New Jersey. That's February 23rd, a voice out of the heavens. Amen. <laughs> It was February 23rd. <laughs> and um, then I think we're going to be talking at the 92nd March. Yes, there's there's a lot of exciting, a lot of exciting things coming up. So we'll be adding those to our uh, updates and our emails as well. So we'll have all of those for our listeners. We'll have the ones um, that you mentioned um, under the comments uh, here. Um, I have now a few questions for you from um, people who have emailed us, who got the notice of this. And the first question I have is, um, will any of the illustrations or storylines in the book appear in upcoming mud strips? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've, I actually have done, you know, every once in a while I'll do a, a, a famous quote and then do a little drawing with the quotes. And I've done, I think, at least two or three quotes from His Holiness, and I, I plan to do more, and probably a few from the book, too. I mean, it, it fits in the much world. I mean, a little much characters are about the, they live on, too. So I think those quotes work really well. So uh, there'll be a few more quotes, that's for sure. And uh, who knows, maybe the panda will make a visit. I never thought of that, but now that you mentioned it, well, you just gave me a, an idea for a week's worth of strips. Like somehow Earl and Mooch are going to meet the panda. You know, I, I didn't name the panda. Maybe when he's a butts, I'll give him a name. Or maybe when we go to Dharamsala, I'll ask Holiness to name the panda. Oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> I'd be keen to know what his oldness would say. <laughs> uh, another question. So we earlier, uh, you also, we saw it, as Pam introduced you also, you've done several books with uh, Eckhart Tolle, with Jen Goodall, with others, and each of these uh, books is different, but you've captured each of their messages in simple and beautiful ways. So how did you come up with the idea to do these collaborations uh, uh, and uh, just the background into, you know, from moving from your you know, uh, much de details that you do into these collaborations. You know, th these people inspire me so much, and I've just been blessed that, that these collaborations happened. With Jane, uh, in my in my comic strip, that little chubby cat I mentioned, Jules, is uh, an animal activist. I did a strip once where uh, his friend Noodles asked him, well, Jules says that he has compassion fatigue. His friend Noodles asked him, how do you, how do you deal with compassion fatigue? And Jules said uh, that his autographed photo of Jane Goodall helps. And that appeared in the paper and the Jane Goodall Institute uh, soared in the paper and they got in touch with me and asked if they could use the art on a, uh, they wanted to use the art on their website. And I said, you can use the art any way you want. And if you don't mind, I would love to send you the original art to give to Jane. They said that uh, Jane was going to be in New York next week. Why don't you give it to her yourself? So I had the uh, pleasure and honor to uh, meet Jane in New York. Had the nerve to ask her uh, if maybe we could do a, a picture book together someday for children. And she was very busy at the time with writing a, a, a book that was coming out soon. So I went home and reread her autobiography, Reason for Hope. And in that book, there was a picture of Jane as a two-year-old with a stuffed chimpanzee. And I said, oh, that's the book. So I, I did a, a biography of Jane as a young girl and her dream to, you know, to go to Africa and help the animals. And uh, the next time she was in New York, I showed it to her and she approved it. So uh, that, that's how that happened. With Eckhart Tolle, 
his book Power of Now was really uh, important to me. I think it really changed me. And I, one of the reasons I was partial to his work was he, he talked about nature and animals, and in particular your dog and cat, and how your dog and cat helps you be in the present moment because they're not in the future or the past. They're in the present. They, they, they grab you and take you to go there. I mean, when your cat's in your lap, that you're, you're there. So I thought it would be fun to put some of my cartoons connected with his words. I put a little dummy together and, and sent it to him and he liked the idea. Sure, let's do it. So I, I got to work with him on Guardians of Being. You know, I have to tell you, I, I, I've been blessed. I've, I've met some important, great people like Jane Goodall and Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie. Uh, you know, what I take from them is, you know, for how crazy everything is, all, all of those people are very optimistic that, that the world can change, you know, and uh, they all have hope in our, our youth. And, uh, you know, that keeps me going. Whenever I get a little depressed about how the world's going, I, I think of them and their optimism. And then now the Dalai Lama. I mean, I just think of the, the smile on his face, the, uh, the optimism they have that we can do better helps me. Thank you. We have a, a, not a question, but a comment. It says, thank you, thank you, thank you to Patrick McDonald for Heart to Heart and for everything you do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little yes at the end. Yes. <laughs> and one final question to you. Um, how did working on this book about His Holiness, uh, um, has it had an impact on you is the question. Uh, how could it not? I, again, I just feel blessed. Um, a small got to do a book with this holy, just small, wonderful world, and I think that's the message of the book. It's a small world, and we just need to take care of it. If anything, it just made me more determined to uh, spend my time wisely. I feel like any project that I do, I always ask myself, how is this helping the world? Uh, I, again, I just feel blessed in, uh, that I get to use this talent I was given to uh, make things better. Thank you. I think um, this come, brings us uh, to the end of our conversation, and uh, I like want to it, end here. It was a real, a real pleasure, real joy. Thank you so much. And this is just the beginning, uh, trick. I hope <laughs> to um, meet you and we travel together. We bring the book to Dharamsala. We go talk to the students at uh, the Tibetan Children's Village, there where I grew up, and uh, want you to share your book there. Uh, for the Tibetan children. I, I, I can't wait. That's good. That's going to be a dream come true. I think that would be special and be special for me also for all of us. So we're really looking forward to that. Right, Pam? We've been talking about Absolutely. That Absolutely. We've been waiting for that trip for a long time. And uh, we have to work on book number two. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get busy. <laughs> Patrick, you and Karen are such beautiful human beings and such a gift to the world. and all of us at ICT are so, so grateful for this incredible, special, beautiful book that you've brought to the world. And I know Tencho and I are just so honored to have been a very small part of helping and shepherding that, that beautiful project called Heart to Heart. So we're sending all of our best wishes and love and it's out there now. Yes, thank you and everybody. <laughs> Everybody, please go out. We are in love with this book and you will be too if you see it. So please purchase it. And the proceeds will benefit, uh, go to a good cause, going to international campaign. And you can, you can share your favorite uh, quotes or your favorite photos on all your social media and share it with your friends. Thank you. And before I end, 
Sorry. Oh, I just said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's going to be our, <laughs> uh, on our trip, we're going to be saying that yes. Um, yes. And for our viewers, I just want to add at the moment uh, that um, at International Campaign for Tibet, our work for Tibet uh, continues. The situation in Tibet is um, remains critical and there is a total lack of access to Tibet. Tibet today is noted as the least free country by Freedom House. On account of the lack of access, there is sometimes a misperception that things are okay in Tibet, as you don't hear anything about that, but this is not the case. So at ICT, we are looking ahead uh, for 2023 with a ambitious work plan, pushing for the reintroduction and passage of important legislation, supporting the Tibetan people and making sure Tibet and the Tibetan people's voices are heard around the globe. Um, and I want to remind everybody to uh, check in at uh, safetibet.org, which is our website, and you can also sign up for our newsletters and email alerts to get uh, more uh, up-to-date information. And with that, I will sign off uh, the reminder, this time Lee Gem of a book again, order and please order. Thank you all for watching this episode of Tibet Talks and we look forward to see you next month. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs>